Hello and welcome to TV Talks, the show where we take a look at both the good and the bad of what television has to offer. Today, from the team that brought you Space Ghost Coast to Coast and Aqua Teen Hunger Force, comes a show that is very, very similar to Space Ghost Coast to Coast and Aqua Teen Hunger Force, dare I say even a combination of the two. The Brack Show. What is The Brack Show? It's exactly what it sounds like. Brack from Space Ghost and to a lesser extent Space Ghost Coast to Coast has his own show, and that's kind of about it. It's kind of like a breakdown of the typical sitcom, you know, Brack is a kid, quote-unquote, with his best friend Zorak, who's a bit of a bad influence. He's got a mom, he's got a dad, and they just get up to wacky shenanigans. And when I say wacky, I don't mean wacky as in, oh, that's so weird and unique, I mean like, what, what? Like I said, this was brought up by the people that made Space Ghost Coast to Coast and Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and it really, really shows. As we know with their kind of styles of shows, they all have the very same kind of humor. Surrealist what the heck am I watching kind of humor. And the Brack show is absolutely no different. Well, a little bit tamer than, say, Aqua Teen. It certainly captured that quite well. Basically, as I said, sort of, earlier, it's basically a mix between Aqua Teen Hunger Force and Space Ghost Coast to Coast. It's kind of a laid-back sense for Aqua Teen, at least. It's got this similar kind of premise and writing style, and it's got the same writing style and characters as Space Ghost Coast to Coast, except Space Ghost, of course. And don't ask how this fits into the continuity of Coast to Coast, if it does at all, because it's very clear that this whole company doesn't really care about continuity so much. They've made that pretty dang clear over the years. Perhaps this is an origin story of some sort, which... I don't know. I've heard theories, but there's no confirmation. So what kind of surrealism does Brack go on here? What kind of crazy adventures does he do? Well, there's an episode where Zorak makes a booth where children pay him to beat the crap out of him. There's that. Or where Brack's favorite lobster doll, named Hippo for some reason, ends up getting taken away from him and he wants to get him back, there's stuff like that. Or where Zorak has an affair with Brack's mom while Brack is stuck in outer space and can't get out and doesn't get out. That's the series finale, by the way. Ooh, yeah, this show is just a whole bunch of nonsense from beginning to end, but it's lovable nonsense. If you like Space Ghost Coast to Coast, you'll love this too. When you get down to it, it's got everything. It's got the characters, it's got the writing style, it's got the humor, it's got just the absolute what is this, what is going on. Also, it's got a little bit of better animation than Coast to Coast. What do I mean by this? Well, yes, they still use some movements and definitely some character models from the old Space Ghost show from way back when. The movements are kind of unique, in the same sense that Aqua Teen Hunger Force has. Like I said, very, very similar between the two. Of course, this doesn't really have the guest stars that Space Ghost Coast to Coast had because, you know, this isn't a talk show. They don't really have the ability to get every episode to have Weird Al or Bobcat Goldthwait or Richard Simmons. Was Richard Simmons ever on Space Ghost Coast to Coast? I, I, don't, I don't think so, but anyways. Another thing that I really like about this is even though they are technically, yes, in a suburban setting, they still keep their main personalities for the most part. Brack is a bit smartened up, which normally is, he's dumbed down, of course, because, you know, he's Brack, and this happens a lot when people get spin-offs, especially comic relief characters. They get dumbed down. However, Brack and Joey Trubiani are the only people I know that actually got smarter when they got their own show. Of course, Brack is still a blithering idiot, but it's not like in, say, Cartoon Planet or Space Ghost Coast to Coast, where you wonder how this guy even functions. Zorak is still an absolute menace to society, and perhaps even a bit more sadistic here. All the other characters are lovable in their own way, but also hateable in their own way. But the kind of hate where you have fun hating them. It's one of those shows. Nobody's really sympathetic, everybody's a terrible, horrible person, and you just love seeing them get their comeuppance. Especially how a lot of the episodes just kind of stop, don't really have them getting out of their situation. Like I said, that final episode ends with Brad getting stuck in space, unable to come back. Granted, that was just a web episode, so I don't know if that one's really canon, but I don't know if any of this is canon, I don't... Like I said, continuity, not their main focus, not their strong suit. But either way, the Brack show is a surrealist nightmare that just brings complete, total chaos and non-stop laughs. So, if you're of the appropriate age, 
I say give it a watch. Gets the Archibald seal of approval. Which, yeah, again, if you're of the appropriate age, because this is definitely an adult show. Not at all for kids. I'd probably say 14, 15 up. Somewhere like that. What did you guys think of the Brack Show? Comment below, let me know, and I'll see you guys next time. Good night, everybody.